I'm Julie, and I'm here to talk about the three mountains that I've actually got an opportunity to climb the last couple of years, Kilimanjaro, Denali, and Aconcagua. Just a quick show of hands. Anybody climb Kilimanjaro? Denali? Aconcagua? Okay, I'm pretty much just got free reign here. So I'll start with <laughs> Kilimanjaro. Um, I spent about a week on the mountain. I spent six days climbing with a, a guided group um, based out of Tanzania. And, and uh, really what I want to tell you about is that it's not that bad. Anybody who can climb a 14er and has a little bit of passion for climbing a big mountain, I think can climb on the drought. It's absolutely a stunning mountain, as you can kind of see. I want to tell you about summit night, though, because you should know, you know, going in, while eyes wide open, um, you get up in the middle of the night at 11 o'clock and you start climbing, and you climb 4,000 feet from 15.3 to 19.3, and it's pitch black, and you've got your coat, and uh, it's kind of loose scree and rocks, and, and you get to the crater rim about 7 o'clock in the morning, and you get to watch the sunrise up over um, the horizon. It's really most, one of the most beautiful things um, I've ever seen. And your guide, if you're lucky, pulls out a juice box from his pack. And it's the best damn juice <laughs> box that you have ever had in your life. And then you walk over to the true summit along the crater rim, and it's awesome. And you think, I'm here, I did it. And then you've got 8,000 vertical feet to go down that day. So you go 4,000 up and 8,000 down in the same day. And I'm here to tell you, that's kind of a long day sunrise here but it was absolutely an amazing experience I um, climbed it with my dad and we made it to the summit as did the other um, eight climbers that were with us in our group I highly recommend it to everyone so a couple months after I got back from that my cousin Rob says hey Julie why don't you come on Denali with me and I say Denali wow that sounds like a much more impressive mountain right <laughs> this is base camp and I look up and, I'm, and I get there off the bush plane and I think what the hell am I doing here are you serious there's a national geographic sized avalanche that just rips down this mountain <laughs> check please next plane home <laughs> I stick with it and uh, this is the Kehoma Glacier and um, this is one of the most photogenic mountains you can imagine on earth, but it is cold and you are miserable and you have a 50 pound pack and a 50 pound sled and let me tell you, you get to drag that sled up and down that mountain. You didn't know you could drag a sled down a mountain, but I've done it. <laughs> By the way, this is your bathroom. This is our, our loo here. Right? <laughs> right? Anybody had a bathroom better than that? I don't think so. Um, and you get to advanced base camp at 14,000 feet, and you're like, oh, we're doing pretty well. All right. There's Hunter. I started down there. It's cool. Um, and then you start really climbing. You climb the head wall, and it goes kind of straight up, right out of this bowl. And you climb a knife edge, which you're just going to see in a second. Um, and I got to high camp. I got to 17-2, and it was kind of a rough climb for me to get there. I was really under-experienced for that kind of climb, and I couldn't get my heart rate under 110 resting. And uh, if you've ever tried to sit up when you're resting heart rate, so 110, that's almost going to kill you. So this is the knife edge. Um, so don't go either way, because it's 2,000 feet on one side and 3,000 feet on the other. And, if, and you're roped to your climbing partner, so if you go, you all go. <laughs> awesome. This is wash for and sun, and this kind of gives you a good sense of what it's like to climb along the knife edge, so don't screw up. I do not recommend Denali for anyone. In fact, I recommend Denali for almost none of you. <laughs> you are really serious about mountaineering. So, it took, I was scarred. A year and a half later, um, same climbing partners decided to organize a trip to Aconcagua, and you can see it here. Aconcagua is in uh, Chile, near Argen or actually in Argentina, near Chile, and it's at 22.8. Now we're talking about a big mountain. It's the highest peak outside of the Himalayas, and you have to hike 20 miles just to get to base camp at 14,000 feet, where you pay $7 for a hamburger and $4 for a Coke, and let me tell you, it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but you climb kind of incrementally from there, going like 1,500 feet or 2,000 feet at a time, doing kind of double carries, 35, 40 pounds. It's really manageable. I call it the kind of Goldilocks mountain. You know, not too easy, not too hard, just right. Um, and I made it to 19.5, it's actually 18.5. Same sunset, right? You see the sensing a theme? You get this in plains and big mountains, and that's it. Um, and I got to 19.5, and um, after doing a carry the day before, and I started to have numbness in my hand, and I started to have garbled speech. Well, when you're at 19.5, guess what? You can't think clearly about anything. And it didn't really occur to me that I was having AMS and, you know, signs of cerebral edema. But um, <laughs> I ended up turning around after pitching camp, putting all my stuff back in my bag, my 65 pound bag, and I walked back down. Uh, so I only uh, successfully summited one mountain, but they were absolutely amazing.
amazing experiences. If you have any questions, I'd love to talk to you afterwards. And all my content is on Flickr and my blog. Do something great. Um, Igniteboulder.com is the website.